Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Pew Yorsky, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this eighth video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on advanced e commerce development using Drupal 7 and Ubercart, we're going to switch gears from theming and start looking at creating an event registration system. This has been something that's been pretty popular. Uh, I've got a lot of requests for this, and so I thought I'd tag it into this uh, second video tutorial series. And what we're going to do in the next two videos is look at how to create a system that will allow users to actually sign up for specific events on our site and then pay for their registration through Ubercart. In the second video tutorial, uh, so our ninth video tutorial, what I'm going to do on this is show you how to take it to the next level and create kind of a cooler admin system uh, so that you can actually look at the registrations that have been created for a specific event, you can email users, and we'll actually create a calendar on the site as well of upcoming events. So there's a lot to cover, so uh, why don't we start by going right over to drupal.org and we'll get some of the modules that we need for this project. So we're going to go to pay per node, which is the main module that we'll be using. Um, and I'm going to actually walk through all the modules that we'll grab just so you know the version that I've grabbed for this video tutorial. So go ahead, download pay per node uh, 7.x-1.0 and install that on your site. Once you have that, you're going to go over and grab auto node title. Same idea, 1.0, grab the version 7. After auto node title, you're going to go and grab references. So what references allow us to do are actually refer to uh, other nodes. So we're going to use that when we're doing our uh, event registrations. So I've got the 2.1 version here for Drupal 7. Then we're going to grab content access. And this module will allow us to ensure that users can see their own registrations but can't see other registrations. And you'll see that I've got the 1.2 beta 2. So after you get content access, you're going to go over and grab email. And this will allow us to create an email field. So we'll go ahead and grab uh, 7.x 1.2, and that will come in handy on our registration. We're also going to grab Views Send, which is a cool little module, which allows us to create a views list, and if there's an email field, we can use that email field. So we'll go ahead and grab 1.0-RC2, uh, or whatever stable release you find at the time that you watch this. Also going to grab the date module, so we can associate some dates with our events, and you'll see that I've got 7.x 2.6. And then lastly, we're going to grab the calendar module, which ties in with the date module and so you're going to want to go ahead and go 7.x-3.4 at least that's the version that I'm using. So once you've grabbed all those you've installed them on your site you're going to go over to the modules and let's start installing what we need here. So first one was auto, auto let's look for was it node? No. And of course this is not working for us. Automatic node titles so you're going to want to have that one checked off. Next thing you're going to look for is pay per node. That's going to have its own system. So you want to check off pay per node, pay per node Ubercart. Obviously it comes with some uh, integration with Ubercart, which is awesome. And then pay per node views. I don't know if we'll actually use those, but it's good to have them set up there. Then references. And you'll see that we can click off references. We'll click off node reference. We're not going to use user references, but that is an option available if you wanted to do something with that. Maybe refer an event to a specific coach or something like that. And then while you're here, you might as well check off the email field. And the next thing we're going to look for is views send. And you know what? We don't even have to search for that one. No, it'll be at the bottom. So there's views send. Go ahead and check that one off. And then the date and the calendar module come with a bunch of different things here. So just when we find it, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and check off calendar. That will allow us uh, the views plugin for calendar. We're going to check off date. We're going to use the date all day because we could have all day events. We need the date API. We're not going to use context because we're not going to be creating context based on our dates, but obviously that's something you could do. I'm not going to worry about the migration here, but I am going to use date pop-up. So that's an Ajax uh, pop-up calendar that I can use to choose my dates. And then I'm going to use the date repeat API because I could have repeatable dates. And obviously I'm going to add a repeat field and then I want to have date views. So that's what I've got installed here. Now let's go ahead and start getting our system set up. So in order to do that, first thing we have to do is we have to add an event registration content type. So let's go over to content type and we're gonna add. And we'll call this event registration. So this, uh, these nodes are what users will fill out after they have registered, actually paid for an event. So right now we'll leave this disabled to automatically generate the node title because we're going to come back to this uh, in the next video tutorial where we're going to actually look at um, 
linking our nodes together. So our event registration, the actual product that was purchased. So I'm gonna to wanna to grab that in the uh, next video tutorial. There's no part doing it now because we don't have the field to grab. And then uh, I also wanna disable the preview before submitting. And I don't want these to be published to the front page. Uh, display author is fine, but comments we don't need. So we'll close that. And then we don't want these involved in our site map. We don't want uh, search engines to find them. So we'll go ahead and we'll save and we'll add fields. Now, first thing you're going to want to do, and I always forget to do this, is you want to delete the body. We don't need that. Users aren't going to provide us with body content when they actually sign up. And we'll add a couple fields here, which I'll just do first name, last name, and email, but you can add whatever you want to these because these are going to be your registrations. So I'm just going to add this as a text field. Go ahead and save that. Required field, and I'm going to leave it as default settings. And then I need to do last name. It's going to be the exact same thing. Again, text field. Go ahead and save that. Required and default settings are fine. And then lastly, I'm going to add an email field. And this is what uh, we'll be using a little bit later on when we can email our users. Oops, I should have chosen the email field. And that's something that just actually formats emails. Make sure that they're you know, properly coming in to the site. Does a little check on them, so that's great. Yeah, and I want that to be required, and I'm going to save that setting. So I can go ahead and move these all up to the top. And I'm going to save that. Now obviously for each one of these fields, I could have added some help information, so when users are filling them out, they'll know what I'm looking for, but I think it's pretty straightforward that I have first name, last name, and email. So now that I've got that created, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a different type of product class. Uh, that will be specific to my events. And this will allow me to add date fields that won't interfere with the rest of my other products. So what I'm gonna call this is event. Actually, this is the event, uh, the machine readable. So I'm just gonna leave that underscored. Call this event. And then this product is associated with specific events that users can purchase a registration for. And that's just so I know what this content type is for. So once I've got that saved, I can actually see this now in my structure content types. I can see I've got event. So let's go ahead and we're going to manage fields. We're going to add a new field here. And I'm going to call this the date field. And I'm going to choose date, just a regular date field. And I'm going to use a pop-up calendar. That was part of the module that we uh, enabled. So we'll go ahead and save this. And so I'm going to choose the month, day, the year, hour, and minute because I could have something at like say 7.30. Uh, I'm going to collect an end date. Uh, and it's not always necessarily going to be required. And so I'm going to use the same uh, time zone, repeating. Um, I guess there could be a repeating if I want to do something weekly, so we'll go ahead and save that. So date is obviously going to be required, and then the rest of this is all the same, so we'll go ahead and save that. And then I just want to move this up underneath my image. And what I should have done is also created a new taxonomy. So what I can do is go to taxonomy, and you'll see that I've already added it, but I've added vocabulary and I'm gonna call this events. And then in my events, what I'm gonna do is gonna create a list of different tags. So right now I've created the uh, training tag. So I wanna go back to my content type, my event, and I wanna manage fields. And what I'd like to do is add a new field, and this will be a taxonomy term reference. And so this will be a select list and this will be um, event type. Go ahead and save that. So it's going to be pulling uh, my vocabulary from events. That's great. We'll save that. And I want this to be required. And number of values is one, so we'll go ahead and save this. And now again, just going to move that up underneath the date, so we'll save that. And now I should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a uh, new event here. So I'm going to go to add content, and I'm going to add an event. And so this event is going to be Pete's super awesome training. Uh, get ready to become a Drupal slash Ubercart ninja. Sign up for this training today. And obviously you can't spell training. It's gonna bug me if it's like that, so. So you had to watch me do that. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, choose a date here. So this date, uh, I'm gonna say that my training is gonna be on Wednesday and I'm gonna make this at eight o'clock in the morning because we definitely wanna be fresh when we're doing this. And then my training is gonna end on Thursday at, I don't know, 
5.15, no, 5 o'clock. Okay, we're not gonna repeat it, so there we go. My event is gonna be a training, I'm gonna go event training. Um, sorry, that's event training. I will say Uber cart, whatever. Uh, sell price gonna be $99, because I offer nothing but the best. And the way that my shipping is set up, I have to add my quantities here. And so I'm gonna be good. Yep, I'm published, good. Actually, one thing I wanna add is promoted front page, we have easy access to that. And I'm gonna hit save and continue. Great, so we get a couple of errors here. That's from the UC nodes previously in another video tutorial as part of the series, don't worry about that. But one thing that I forgot to do was show you this pay per node settings here. So I gotta to go to allowed content types just before I go ahead and add my feature. And I gotta look at this and I've gotta check off event registration. So this is what users are allowed to create once they purchase my event. They're allowed to create an event registration. So whatever you call yours, you wanna have that checked off. So mine's checked off, that's good. I can go back over to features and now I'm gonna add a new feature. This should be similar to the uh, coupon creation that we did previously in the file download in the other video tutorial. But now you'll see we have pay for notes. We're gonna go ahead and add that. And you'll see that I've got one quantity. That's how many registrations the user is allowed to create. And they're allowed to create event registration, save the feature, and now we're good to go. So if I go back to the home page, you'll see that I've got Pete's super awesome training here. So why don't we go ahead and test this out and allow an anonymous user to make this purchase. So to do that, I'm gonna hit Control Shift N bring up an anonymous window, which is nice because uh, Chrome won't know that I'm actually logged into the site, so it'll be just like I'm anonymous on the site. And you'll see here I've got uh, this event registration. I'll go ahead and add that to the cart. So with that added to the cart, I'll go ahead and check out, but I won't make you actually watch that. So we'll check back in once we're uh, ready to finalize the sale. So I've gone ahead and I'm ready now to submit the order, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you'll notice my site automatically logs me in. Um, but the one thing, because I'm on a test site with uh, Test PayPal, uh, PayPal isn't reporting that I've actually paid for this product. So what I need to do is I need to go and complete the order. So I'm just gonna go back to my, as my administrator, go to orders. And I'm just gonna check out this uh, order that I just created and I'm gonna put that as completed. I can update that. Now when I go back to my site and I reload this, you'll see that the user has the ability to add content here. Now that's a little bit ugly, so why don't we go and we'll actually fix that up here. So instead of add uh, content, what I want them to be able to do is add a registration. So I'm gonna go into the navigation menu. And rather than add content event registration here, I'm gonna pull that out. And I'm gonna disable this add content because that's the only thing they can create. I'm gonna save this. Now obviously this might be a little bit different for your site depending on how you have it set up. But I find this is the easiest, uh, at least for this specific use case where this is the only content that a user is gonna be creating. And then rather than event registration, what I'm going to call this is called, uh, you know, create um, we'll register for your event. Register for the events you've paid to attend. I don't know, whatever. We'll go ahead and save that. Now if we go and we reload our page, we'll see we've got register for your event. And then you'll see we hover over register for the events you paid for. We'll go click on that. And the user is given permission to create one. We still have this title field, which we'll, we'll hide in the next video's tutorial. But for now, we'll just uh, call this, you know, uh, Pete's registration, Peter, y, y at y .com. We'll save that. Now you see that the ability to create one is gone and it's redirected me to my actual registration here so I can see what that looks like. And then if I actually go to my account, you can see that I've got this pay per node tag, uh, which we're actually gonna change up in the next video tutorial because pay per node is a little bit ugly. But we can go and click on that and you can see that I've purchased one event, I've created one event, and then I can actually see the registration that I have down here. And if I go into that, I can modify it. And here are my abilities. And this is obviously based on permissions and so I guess that's one thing we should flag. When we go back to our content types, what we should do is make sure that we have the appropriate uh, content access permissions. So I don't know if we actually checked those out when we were looking at our modules, but let's go ahead and uh, make sure we enable that. So we'll go to content access. And there's no underscore, so that's why I can't find it. And so there we go. There's just the one module to check off. We'll go ahead and click that off. We're not actually gonna use the rules integration, but it's good to know that content access provides us that. So now with content access, what we can do is we can go to our content types. Always remember to check this off, save your settings. I don't have to because mine was already created. 
but I'm going to go to my event registration. I'm going to click on access control. And so here I can actually control how this is going to be handled by the system. So view any event registration content. Definitely not anonymous users. And I don't want authenticated users to view any. But to be able to view their own, I do want authenticated users. And it has to be authenticated users because we know only they can create them. So don't worry about the anonymous. And edit any. We don't want anybody except for administrators to edit any. But edit own, we do want authenticated users to be able to view that. And uh, for the sake of this video tutorial series, we're not going to go into deleting, but obviously we could allow users to delete their own event registration, and then we could set up a rule that automatically emails administrators if that were the case. Uh, but you should have the tools to be able to do that yourself uh, based on our rules coverage. So we'll go ahead and save that. Our permissions have been rebuilt, so that's nice. And again, we can go back to our page here. We can go to my account. And this shouldn't really change anything. We can still go to paper node and we can see that we can go back in and modify our actual uh, event registration and we can also view it. So that's nice. And then if we copy this and we log out, we can click here, paste this. And obviously we've got a bit of a problem, so I should go back. What we need to do is rebuild our permissions and we can go ahead and do that by going to status report. And then, don't access permissions, rebuild permissions. We're going to rebuild them all. Okay, now if we go to our site and we reload this page, we get an access denied. So that's good. So we can see that we can't, but if we log in, we can see that we still have the ability to access the registration. So this is good. So people can actually create a, or rather purchase an event registration on our site. But right now we have no linkage between what they're registering for and what they actually purchased. So in the next video tutorial, we're going to go ahead and add a reference to this so that we can see that. And we also have to enable administrators to be able to see the list of users that have actually registered for an event. Currently, if we went back to our site and we checked out our product, there's no actual list of who's made this purchase. There's no easy way to check that out. So we're going to do that as well. But on top of that, what we need to be able to do is add a way for administrators to email those users. So we'll be using a views list to do that as well. And then we're also going to clean up our, our page here where we've got under my account, I've got pay per node. We're going to clean that up, make that a little bit nicer. And we're going to make sure that uh, administrators have an easy way to see what they're actually looking at here. Um, and then after that, we should be good to go uh, to create a calendar on our site of all the upcoming events so that users can come check out what's on the docket and then go ahead and register for that. So that's all coming up in the next video tutorial. Hopefully you learned a little something in here. I know maybe you're not creating an event registration system, but it'd be good to know about you know the uh, paper node module, references, uh, automatic node titles, that kind of thing. So if you learned something, please throw a thumbs up or leave a comment. Let me know how this is helping you out. And until the next video tutorial, thanks for watching.